Okay, so a lot of people have meniscal injuries and meniscal tears, and most of the people end up having partial meniscectomy procedures. So they lose a lot of meniscus tissue. And meniscus, as we know, is very important for function in the knee, for protecting the knee from developing osteoarthritis in the future. So if the meniscal tissue is lost, the patients are at high risk of developing osteoarthritis uh, quite quickly. So meniscal transplant is a procedure where we try and replace the meniscus or the lost meniscal tissue with a graft. So it gives you back the protection that you need in the knee to help avoid getting osteoarthritis. So most patients who've had previous knee surgeries, such as arthroscopies, and have had meniscal tears and have had partial meniscectomies, so part of the meniscus has been removed, all these patients are suitable because once the meniscus is removed, the forces going through the joint are increased and it predisposes them to have wear and tear and developing osteoarthritis. So if you've had a previous meniscectomy done, you're experiencing some pain in the knee, you're probably the right candidate because we can then assess you, do an MRI scan, find out how much of your meniscus you've lost, and then plan a meniscal replacement surgery. So the risks for the meniscal replacement surgery or meniscal transplant are minimal. So there's ideally two different types of meniscal replacements we use. One is a biosynthetic scaffold for people who've lost only part of the meniscus. And the other one is an allograft, which is a donor graft, which is prepared and cleansed for the procedure. And this is when people have lost quite a lot of their meniscus. So they need a whole meniscus replacement. So the risks of surgery are similar to knee arthroscopic surgery because this is done through an arthroscopic surgical procedure. And there is no risk for donor rejection because the donor graft is cleansed, prepared, and is pretty much non-viable tissue. It's just acting as a spacer in your knee to give you the protection you need. There's no active cells that can cause any rejection or any problems with that. So unfortunately, people who've had meniscectomies done have lost part of their meniscus are highly prone to developing osteoarthritis. So once the osteoarthritis sets in, the only option that's available to them is joint replacement surgery or partial joint replacement surgery to address that. So the advantage of the meniscal replacement procedure is that we are trying to delay or halt that osteoarthritis progression. So you have the meniscal replacement done, it re connects your normal biomechanics in your knee. It improves the protection in your knee, protects the cartilage from wearing out and stops the process of osteoarthritis. And hence, you don't need to go down that pathway of developing osteoarthritis and needing any major surgery such as joint replacement surgery. So the recovery procedure following surgery is similar to a meniscal repair uh, procedure post-op protocol which means after the surgery, you'll be in a brace, in a hinge knee brace. We try and protect the weight you're putting through the knee. So the first few weeks, you'll not be putting much weight. Then we start off with toe touch weight bearing, then partial weight bearing, and then full weight bearing over a span of six to eight weeks. This is just to protect the meniscus, allow it to heal, allow it to embed in. Secondly is the range of motion. So you're put in a hinge knee brace and we try and protect your range of motion uh, from zero degrees of extension or full extension to 30 degrees flexion, 60 degrees flexion, 90 degrees flexion, again, every two weeks. This is, again, not to put too much force and pressure on the meniscus while it's healing and repairing. So you're looking at about six to eight weeks in a brace with restricted range of motion and weight bearing. Once you come out of brace at that stage, we start with physical therapy, muscle strengthening, range of motion exercises, and it'll take you about three to four months to start getting back to your routine activities.